Hey church, it's good to be back with you. Uh, miss you guys and uh, love you very much. Looking forward to a, a day where we can be together in person. But until then, God will bless this time uh, as we worship together uh, on Zoom, all right? Good deal. Well, we're continuing on in our series, uh, Giving Up Your Idols. And uh, we're, we're, I titled the message today, The Idol of Glamping, and I'll clarify that in just a minute, but uh, let's, let's open with prayer. Lord, bless this time. Use your word to encourage us, Lord. May we be transformed, may we be different because of the truth of your word being lived out in our lives, Lord. Thank you for what you're going to do. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Well, guys, back in the day, there was a respect for Christianity. And what I mean by that is, it wasn't that many years ago that people respected, they, even if they didn't go to church, there was a respect for the church. There was, things were different than they are now. We were, we were in a post-Christian society right now. And, and one of the day, ways that I kind of show that, and, and, and one of the ways that to me it shows to be true is uh, uh, this week, Ron and I were once again kind of doing a, uh, walking the grounds, and, and uh, sure enough, on the upper parking lot, um, somebody had dumped a whole bunch more garbage, right, that's going down the hill and, and right on in, in the parking lot, and, and it was just all this just junk and crud all over the place. And, and I remembered saying to Ron, I was like, man, 20 years ago, this, this kind of stuff didn't happen. He was like, yeah, I know, it's, it's changed. People have changed. You see, uh, there's an intentional effort going on to transform our culture. And the idol of glamping is what we've got to be careful of. And what I mean by glamping is camping in style, glamping. Living like the temporary is permanent. Living like this world is our home and it's going to be what we have for eternity. But man, we've got something special ahead of us. And so things are not going to be as they are now for all of eternity. And so, well, the Israelites had been, uh, they, they have found themselves in a situation very similar to the ones that uh, we're finding ourselves in now. The culture is changing. And one of the reasons the culture was changing for them as we look at Daniel 1 is because they had gotten away from honoring God. They had stopped honoring God and how they lived. They had stopped following his truth and, and, and they, had, they had struggled in, in their faith and, and turned away from God. And there's consequences for that. So let's pick it up. Daniel 1.1. 1, 1. In the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came to Jerusalem and besieged it. And the Lord delivered Jehoiakim, king of Judah, into his hands, along with some of the articles from the temple of God. These he carried off to the temple of his God in Babylonia and put into a treasure house of his God. You see, when you live as though God doesn't exist, there's going to be consequences. And back in the day, needed to be taken away. The king of Babylon conquers Jerusalem. He confiscates the king of Judah and the articles from the, God's temple. See, what was happening here was Babylon was taking over the Israelites' culture. They were changing it from a, a culture that honored God just a little bit, more in the past, but just a little bit now, into a, a culture that followed pagan gods. Verse 3, Then the king ordered Ashpenaz, chief of his court officials, to bring into the king's service some of the Israelites from the royal family and the nobility. And look who he chooses here. Verse 4, Young men without any physical defect, handsome showing aptitude for every kind of learning, well-informed, quick to understand, and qualified to serve in the king's palace. He was to teach them the language and the literature of the Babylonians. The king assigned them a daily amount of food and wine from the king's table. They were to be trained for three years, and after that they were to enter the king's service. So let's look at this. This is a changing, uh, an advance, an extreme changing of the culture for these men. They're bringing in the best. 
the, the, the best looking, the, the most intelligent, and they're trying to change their language, their literature, that they're trying to bring everything in and, and reprogram them. And they, they not only try and give them a new language and literature, but, but they give them f new food and wines. And, and it's all from the king's table. And it's all for the idea of, 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 of bowing down and honoring these, these pagan gods. See, back in the day, it needed to be programmed away. They needed to be reprogrammed to worship the Babylonian gods. These people had lost their ability to appreciate the past, the, the Israelites. And once again, Israel had a, a rebelled against God. So in roughly around 600 BC, God allowed Nebuchadnezzar to take over Jerusalem. Nebuchadnezzar kept knocking them down until they had lost their own culture. Does it sound familiar? Then he assimilated them into Babylonian culture, a dark pagan culture. You know, uh, a, a pagan society wants you to worship it, government instead of God. We don't want you to worship God. We want you to worship the government. We want you to worship a way of thinking, a, a social, these social truths. The idol of culture is powerful because it means community acceptance. We all want to be accepted by our community. And so, man, there's a lot of power that can be wielded there. We can worship culture without even knowing it. And Nebuchadnezzar is trying to take out the Israelites' culture of faith in God and put in the Babylonian pagan culture. Nebuchadnezzar tried to mandate glamping. He tried to mandate glamping. And uh, living like the temporary is permanent. His goal was to get them to start feeling and thinking in a secular way. So he picks the best young man and he moves them physically so that he could indoctrinate them culturally. Indoctrinate means to, to teach a person or, or a group of people to accept a set of beliefs uncritically and unconditionally. To, to, to give up your brain, to give up what you know to be truth and uncritically thinking, just take in what's being taught to you without saying, hey, is this good? Is this real? Is this true? Well, the same is true for us. Look at our schools, our values, our freedoms. We have been increasingly losing our Christian heritage. And guys, we need to be so careful because this pagan culture that's around us is trying to be force fed into us. And, the, and, 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 and our culture, the people around us are saying, do this or else. If you think this way, we will accept you. But if you think differently, then you're on the fringe. Then we mock you, we ridicule you, or we condemn you and make your life miserable. Verse six, among those who were chosen were some from Judah, Daniel, uh, Hananiah, uh, Michelle, and Azariah. The chief official gave them new names to Daniel, the name Belshazzar, to Hananiah, Shadrach, and Meshach, and Abednego, as you know. But Daniel resolved not to defile himself with the royal food and wine. And he asked the chief official for permission not to, to defile himself in this way. Guys, the secular Western culture, it's after our kids. It's after our children. We are being re-indoctrinated right now through, through multimedia, new media. There's a push, a constant push to take God out of everything. We are forced into a new way of thinking, agree or else on abortion, on homosexuality, LGBT, the list goes on and on. All these things that, that go against God's truth are being pushed as must be received as good and normal and right and better. And quite honestly, there's a cost to saying no. We will be condemned, we will be mocked, we will be looked at differently. But we don't say we think this way because we have a better way that's, that's our way. What we do is we point to the word of God and say, this is God's truth. 
It's not my, my ideas are better than your ideas. That has nothing to do with anything. None of my ideas are better than any other, anybody else's ideas. But God's truth is real and good. Trying to, uh, trying to make the Bible, you know, the, it's interesting because there's a push. There's been a push for a while, but it's really gaining ground right now. And they're trying to make the Bible hate speech. Legally, people are trying to make the Bible hate speech because of its teaching on homosexuality. And if that's done, that's going to greatly affect the church, and we're moving in that direction. And if we're not careful, we're going to find ourselves where, where faith being expressed can include the Word of God. Because uh, what used to be wrong is now right. Because on, on, uh, on Vashon Island, uh, the, the senior pastor, Pastor Paul, great pastor, and myself, I was the youth pastor there. We would meet at this restaurant and, and we would discuss, you know, the different things at the church and, and we would meet on a certain day of the week. Well, we would meet at one table and at the table just right next to us, but a little around a half a corner, there, the, the, the leaders from the Church of Satan would, would meet every week at the same time. And it was crazy. Well, first of all, I found myself kind of listening sometimes more to their conversation than our own, but, but to hear them talking and to hear how, how organized and how focused they were and, and to, to get, uh, you know, just the, this whole plan that was, this was, this was uh, 28 years ago when it started. And, and so, uh, you know, a lot's changed in the last 28 years, hasn't it? And, and back then there was this push to, uh, to, to really make uh, homosexuality part of every day and, and really push it as positive and normal. And they were saying what we need to do is we need to get it into the media and into the television programs. And, and what we have to do is we have to, we have to make it normal and funny and, and part of everyday culture. And back then there was such a push and now we've seen all that come true. They had, they had goals to, to throw these giant parties and bring children in and teens in and, and get drugs and have, have, have specifically people who are, who are pushing a, a homosexual lifestyle on these kids who are drunk and, and high and, and getting them involved in this lifestyle. It was, it was challenging. It was challenging to hear. And, uh, and my heart hurt because I knew that, man, there's, there's such a push to get the world's truth into our young people. Well, we needed to focus, we need now to focus on what God's truth is to get out of this. And we see here Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Here's these, these three guys and, and Daniel. And they're refusing, they're refusing to, to eat the food. They, they don't want to do it. They say, no, no. And Daniel says, no, I, I, listen, let us, let us eat something else. Let us uh, not have the royal food. Let us have just vegetables and, and, and water. And, uh, and that's what they asked for, for permission not to, to defile themselves through these foods. Well, what happens? At verse 9, it says, Now God had caused the official to show favor and compassion on Daniel. And it ends up that, that, that Daniel and, and Daniel include Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in, in that favor of not, not eating the, the, the royal foods and drinking the royal wine and defying, defying themselves. And so as, as these other young men are, are being brought in to, to this new culture, these four young men refuse. There's only four, and they refuse. And it says in verse 9, Now God had caused the official to show favor and compassion on Daniel and his friends as a result. And so what does that mean? It means that they start, that, that their ability to learn is much greater than the, the rest of the guys that they brought in. They're not having the wine or this food, and yet their ability to learn is great. And, pretty, and, and Daniel's even able to interpret dreams. And, and Daniel is, is used by God to interpret dreams for the king, and, and it's blessed. And, and what's the result of this favor? We see that God uses that favor to move these four men into positions of leadership where they can bring back their culture to a godly culture, bring it back to a place where, where God is, is seen 
as the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And we see that in Daniel 2, 46 through 49. Then King Nebuchadnezzar, this is after the dream of Nebuchadnezzar and how, how Daniel was used to really bless and encourage and, and, uh, and, 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 and protect the king. And so the King Nebuchadnezzar, verse 46 of Daniel 2, then King Nebuchadnezzar fell prostrate before Daniel and paid him honor and ordered that an offering and incense be presented to him. Then the king said to Daniel, surely your God is the God of gods and the Lord of kings and the revealer of mysteries, for you were able to reveal this mystery. Then the king placed Daniel in a high position and lavished many gifts on him. He made him ruler over the entire providence of Babylon and placed him in charge of all its wise men. Moreover, at Daniel's request, the king appointed Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego administrators over the providence of Babylon, while Daniel himself remained at the royal court. Look at how God blessed these men. Here's Daniel, and, and Daniel is the, the ruler over the entire providence of Babylon. He can have a, such an impact on the culture, on the society, because he's been faithful to God. Guys, if we are faithful to God, he's going to use us in ways that are amazing. Well, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and Daniel, man... Look at how God blessed them with these areas of leadership. Now, because they were put in areas of leadership and blessed, we know that means they didn't experience any hardships. No, it means they did experience hardships, not that they didn't. You see, remember with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they were put in a fire for disobeying, and, 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 and they were put in the furnace, and an angel of the Lord was with them. Daniel was put in the lion's den, and but God giving these four men blessings and favor doesn't mean they didn't experience difficulties and hardship. I'd say being thrown in a fire that is super hot or being thrown in a lion's den with hungry lions. But both times, God, with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, God delivered them. And with Daniel in the lion's den, he shut the lion's mouths and he delivered them. It doesn't mean having the favor doesn't mean that they didn't experience any of the hardships. It means that they experienced those hardships in ways that they were not alone. God was with them. He went with them through the fire, through the, the lion's den. He, he brought them out and into his blessing. Guys, if we stand for Christ, we are going to face hardships, I promise you. But we will find favor in God and what God will find favor and, and be, use us to bring pockets of transformation in our communities, to bring, to bring blessing. And, and, and if enough believers stand together, we can change a culture. Here it only took four. So these were four who were willing to stand super strong. But think of what God could do through the church if we were to stand lovingly, not rudely, but lovingly, but standing against the lies of a pagan culture and stand for God's truth in ways that bring people in, that love God and love people. Guys, we're called to something different. Let's be willing to stand. Let's be willing to be like Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Let's be willing to do what God has called us to do. Let's be willing not to take in the, the culture of the day, not to defile ourselves, but to stand for God's truth. May God bless you and use you in the weeks and months and years to come. And may God transform us and bring us back to biblical truths and into new biblical truths that we weren't living out in ways that, that we see that all people groups are lifted up and encouraged and blessed and that God is honored in our society. May God give you the strength to endure blessings. Let's close in prayer. Lord, bless us. Make us a blessing to many. Use us for your glory. Give us your strength to endure whatever is put before us. May we be willing to stand for your truth and say no to the culture that is constantly being thrown our way. May we do these things for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.
All right. Blessings, guys. Have a wonderful week. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll talk to you soon. May God bless you.